Uh, good evening, Pomona. Uh, at this time, I would like to call the meeting of the City Council Housing Authority and Successor Agency to the redevelopment agency to order and turn this time over to the City Attorney for a report on the closed session. Mayor, Council members, and members of the public, we had several closed session items this evening um, regarding um, pending litigation, um, threats of litigation, and claims, and we do not have any reportable action on any of the items. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, we will adjourn this meeting to a meeting on Monday, December 7, 2020, that will take place via Zoom webinar. Closed session items will be discussed at 5.30 p.m. The open session will commence at 7 p.m. Uh, on March 16, 2020, the City Council declared a local emergency in response to the global COVID-19 outbreak. Preserving the health and safety of our employees and the public is our top priority. In accordance with California Governor's Executive Order N-25-20, regarding the Brown Act and guidance from the California Department of Public Health and Gatherings. This meeting is taking place by teleconference. The Council Chambers is closed. The public is accessing the meeting via the Pomona Internet Streaming Channel on the City's website. Council members and I, along with the City Manager, the City Attorney, City Clerk, and Executive Team are all in different locations. Please bear with us as the technology may disrupt the flow of the meeting. Uh, the agenda has been modified to accommodate the needs of a Council meeting that is teleconference. At this time, I'd like to ask Council Member Elizabeth Honorose Colt to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand? Hand over your right hand over your heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may sit down. Thank you, Council Member. Well, Rosalia, uh, will you please do roll call? Yes. Council Member Gonzalez. Council Member Preciado. Here. Council Member Garcia. Here. Council Member Ontiveros Cole. Here. Council Member Lustro. Here. Council Member Tor uh, Torres. Here. And Mayor Sandoval. Here. Oh, will you please read the next item? Next item is Mayor Council Member Communications. These are reports on conferences, seminars, and regional meetings attended by the Mayor and City Council and announcements of upcoming events. Okay, let's go ahead and start with uh, Council Member uh, Preciado. Hello, everyone. A um, couple of things since the last time we met. Um, just wanted to thank city staff and all the sponsors who helped uh, put together Spooky Treats and Eats. In two hours, we were able to have uh, 814 cars pass by, we fed 1,200 families, and we gave out 3,000 bags of candy to children. Um, uh, thank you this past Saturday for Pomona Valley Hospital for having the flu shot drive through uh, Please take a moment to get your flu shot. There will be more available. Um, the Art Walk, and it's still going on with our small businesses in the downtown. Thank you for those who are supporting them all the way from the packing plant, all the way to the 500 block. And uh, even if it's not Art Walk night, um, I would still suggest that you stop by to some of these stores. You can order online as well and just pick up uh, on the, as a drive-through option. Um, you'll find some great stuff for Thanksgiving and Christmas shopping. Um, this Saturday at Tony Serta Park, we'll be doing a cleanup at 9 a.m. Uh, you will be assigned to a location. You must wear your gloves and your mask at all times. Um, and COVID instructions will be adhered to. And that being said, please, uh, especially with gatherings coming up, uh, please be safe. If you can avoid uh, uh, big gatherings, please do so. Take a look at the LA County Health Department uh, regulations as, as best as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. So just to go off of what my colleague, Council Member Preciado said, I would really like to um, ask everyone to please support local business businesses here in Pomona. We have more than you guys can imagine. My mom reminded me this past weekend that we actually have a great sewing and fabric store on Holt Avenue. Uh, they fix sewing machines and all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, Miley's Fabrics, I completely forgot about it from uh, my childhood. I also want to remind everyone that we have Shop Small Saturday, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And that's going to be 11-28, November the 28th, shop in downtown Pomona. I also want to let everyone in District 3 know that we do have an area commander meeting with our very own um, Lieutenant Samuels on November 19th.
Zoom at 3.30 p.m. We also have the Stuff a Cruiser event at Target on November 21st. Now more than ever during COVID-19, families are in need of food for the holidays, toys for the holidays. A special kudos to my colleagues and city staff members who participate in the Spooky Treats and Neats. Next up is Thanksgiving and Christmas. Let's try to make everything a little happier for everyone all around. I also want to thank uh, my youth commissioner, Javi R Rivera Rodriguez, for helping me clean up Philadelphia Park after it was graffitied a couple of weeks ago. I think it's very important to, um, to keep our parks up. I know that right now because of COVID-19 restrictions, we are not able to change the mural uh, as was planned at the one year mark. So we will try to maintain it until we can uh, get together and have art again. And with that being said, Pleat Pomona, our infection rates are spiking. Do not forget that the Fairplex is a free COVID testing site through the city of Los uh, through the county of Los Angeles. Please go online, book your appointment. If you have insurance, they'll ask you for it. If you don't have insurance, go get tested. We we would rather you be safe than sorry. So with that, I I will end my communications and hope to see everyone in District Three via Zoom for the. Area Commander meeting on Thursday, November 19th at 3.30. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Honorable School. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say good evening to everyone and hope everybody is safe. Um, we need to pay attention closely to what is being said on the radio, on the TV, all of the um, advice that is given for the COVID-19. Uh, we are having um, a spiking issue all over the country. There are some states that are really becoming uh, quite uh, critical. But, uh, you know, if we follow the rules, if we wear our masks, wash our hands, and continue to stand six feet apart in various uh, locations when we are meeting together or whatever the situation is, I think we all know by now what is necessary. Also, I want to thank, um, again, Public Works, uh, Park and Rec, uh, the, uh, gosh, what else? I mean, there's so many people that are working with me um, in regards to so many things that are being done in the city, um, bringing in 38 trees to Washington Street. Thank you so much, uh, Mike Ossoff and your crew and um, for making this possible. The residents are overjoyed by the beauty that you have created. Thank you so much for working with me. Um, also the other trees that are being put uh, in through um, District 4 is um, very well uh, appreciated by the residents. They, they have been waiting for quite a while, but there was reasons for that and we all understand. But thank you so much, very much. Um, Renee Guerrero again with your crew um, uh, putting in uh, various things that needed to be done for the city. Um, I can't thank you enough because without your help, these things would not be done. So I appreciate everything that you do. All of you, uh, the, the crew, Jerry Perez, all of you, just thank you so much for being there for the city of Pomona and for hearing my um, uh, uh, concerns and coming through with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Lestro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to start off by uh, offering my congratulations to my, uh, my three colleagues uh, who were uh, just uh, reelected. I'm sure you're all glad that the, uh, uh, the campaign uh, is over and the, uh, and the election is over. Uh, I can move on and, and do the business of the city now. Um, since our last uh, uh, council meeting, which I guess is about a month ago, um, I've been able to uh, uh, put together two landscape cleanups uh, in District 5, one last month and one this past Saturday. And uh, in, in both of those, in each of those cleanups, I should say collectively, um, did about uh, probably about 100 person hours of volunteer uh, work uh, out in the community. And we collected 261 bags of landscape debris. Uh, off of the street and adjacent to the streets, 261. And these are, these are not little shopping bags, they're 42 gallon bags. Uh, so I wanna thank uh, uh, all of the, uh, the residents who came out to, uh, to help out with those projects. Uh, everybody wore masks, we, uh, uh, we uh, observed social distancing, everybody's kind of working in their own area. And uh, there's uh, uh, 
there was kind of an excitement amongst people that they want to come out and do it again. So we'll hopefully look at doing it again uh, uh, in the very near future. And then lastly, uh, I will say, and I will confess that uh, I watched my uh, uh, first uh, space launch in many years uh, yesterday, as I'm sure many of you did, uh, because we have a, a Pomona native, Victor Glover, who is uh, getting ready to, uh, as part of his crew, get ready to dock with the International Space Station in about a little, little less than an hour. Um, that uh, will be uh, uh, viewable on NASA TV, I'm sure as uh, well as other outlets. Uh, so anybody who's watching and you, you skip away from this council meeting to uh, watch the docking with the International Space Station, uh, my feelings certainly won't be hurt because that's a lot more exciting than anything we're doing here tonight. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Torres. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's city council meeting. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had our uh, previous meeting, um, but I wanna take this opportunity uh, to thank the residents and the voters of District 6 for uh, bringing me back, voting to bring me back. Uh, the election results have not been certified yet, uh, they will be certified uh, at the end of the month, but as the results are showing, um, I will be serving for another four years on the city council. And I want to thank the residents very much who invited me into their home, who talked to me about issues that are important to them, and who supported our campaign over the course of not just the last month or on election day, but over the last three months. Um, this election was very important, not just for our district, but for our city in, in a lot of different ways. Um, we have to improve 911 emergency response times. We have to establish more police oversight. We have to repave more roads. And we have to address a lot of small issues that the residents of Pomona have been calling for. Um, and as I talk to many residents, and I talked to over 1,200 residents in District 6 personally, face to face, um, use, utilize protection, of course. But as I talk to each and every single resident, um, people are calling for. Uh, big changes and small changes. Um, and I'm going to be looking forward to working with new commissioners. I'm looking forward to appointing a, a, a bunch of new commissioners to various commissions. Um, and I'm planning to accomplish a lot of my campaign promises in a lot of different ways. I'm planning to utilize uh, the voice of the people and uh, utilize their help and support. Another thing I want to touch base about is um, I'm very excited about some of the changes uh, happening at the federal level. Um, I understand that some people may be disappointed with uh, some of the outcome or, or the election. A lot of the politicians are upset that some of these elections didn't go their way. Um, it's okay, but I can tell you from the city of Pomona, uh, I'm looking forward to some changes and to some constructive dialogue revol uh, revolving around the COVID-19 pandemic and not just moving Pomona forward, but the state of California and the country forward. There's a lot of people who need help with rent assistance. There's a lot of people who need help with their uh, utilities assistance. Um, and we need to be able to get them financial support. Um, I heard a lot of people tell me they need childcare services. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, different uh, areas where Pomona seems to be lacking. Um, and with the new administration coming in, I'm optimistic that the city of Pomona uh, will see some positive changes in the form of financial contributions to the city. Um, with that, I do want to conclude by encouraging people to continue to wear a mask. I know that somehow this has become a political hot hotbed issue, right? But the fact that remains is that uh, everybody's getting sick with COVID-19. A lot of people are getting sick. There's over 6,600 cases in the city of Pomona and we're one of the highest impacted communities uh, in LA County. Um, the LA County Health Department is urging residents of the city of Pomona to take extra precaution when out in public. Uh, I encourage you to double wear, uh, double mask and wear gloves in public. Um, if you need any of those supplies, you know that you could contact my office. Uh, over the last six months, I've given out thousands, thousands of masks and thousands of bottles of hand sanitizer um, and have plenty more for anybody in need. Thank you so much. Okay, I just have a few words uh, to, sh to share. Um, I think the uh, first thing that I do want to share is that um, we still have an ongoing application process for rental assistance. Uh, the way the process is working, it's uh, first come, first serve, as I understand it, and that it'll continue uh, as long as the 
dollars are there to be able to support our families. So I really want to encourage if you have not done so and you feel like you may be eligible, there are four organizations that are assisting with this effort. Uh, so I really want to encourage uh, residents or if you know some family, you, if you know of a family that could benefit from this, please absolutely let them know uh, so that they could take advantage of this program that is available. Uh, I also, and correct me if I'm wrong, Benita, but I also believe that the small business assistance is still open, uh, but I want to make sure that that is correct. Are you on the line, Benita? Uh, yes, I am, Mayor, and yes, small business is still open. We've extended it through the end of the year. Okay, great, great. So if you're a small business or a, what we call a micro business, uh, we really want to encourage you uh, to apply uh, as soon as possible. I know there's going to be a lot of different, um, I guess for lack of a better term, events that will be happening. And really many of the events that are happening are really about helping people, particularly with food um, and some type of support that will help keep them um, uh, in, in their home, uh, in their apartment uh, at this time. Those are most of the types of events that are happening, food distribution events. But it's really critical that every resident to the degree that they can, and let's keep in mind that when you see a case rate in Pomona and you see it relative to other communities, it's high. And it's important to contextualize that. And the reality is, is that Pomona is a young city that has a lot of essential workers that are working in the distribution and warehouse industry, they're working in restaurants, they're working in hotel motels, they're working on the front lines. And as the research shows, communities of color have been the most impacted by COVID-19. And that's part of the reason why we have the case that we have. But we also have uh, some community members who choose to have family gatherings and we know that it's a challenging time uh, for people uh, because they feel socially isolated but it's critical, it's really critical that community members understand that uh, it is not allowed for people to have multiple families over together for the different types of events that you would want, that you want to have is not acceptable. I understand it's two to three uh, families currently, but again, it's, we're just coming on Thanksgiving. There's uh, the winter holidays that will be coming up, including Christmas. And it's, it's, it's essential that people take precautionary measures, be conservative, stay at home. I think we all know how critical this is. Far too many people have lost their lives, both in this country, in California, and I know we've lost lives here in the city of Vermont. So I just wanna remind our residents to be very cautious and to take all the precautions necessary and please, please no large parties, no large events. Uh, while we understand that people wanna connect because it's a very human thing to want to do, it is not, it is not allowed at this time. Uh, and so I just wanna express that. And with that, I want to turn over to our city clerk for the next item. Okay, next item is city manager communications and these are reports from the city manager. Nothing at this time, city clerk. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, with that, uh, we go to the next item, which is public participation. So public participation in response to the global COVID-19 pandemic in accordance with California Governor's Executive Order N2520 regarding the Brown Act and guidance from the California Department of Public Health on gatherings. Please note that comments for public participation or for a specific item on the agenda were accepted by email and will be read into the record by the city clerk. The deadline to submit email comments was 6 p.m and comments will also be accepted via the Q&A feature on Zoom or by live comment by phone or internet. If you would like to comment, please indicate now to staff by either using the raise hand feature on Zoom, dialing star nine if you're calling in via phone or leaving a comment in the Q&A box. Staff will call you uh, one at a time. Each speaker will have up to three minutes for their comment. And Mayor, I'll go ahead and read the email comments that were submitted to the city clerk's office today. Our first comment um, is from Joshua Machuca. And at the request of the city manager, we'll go ahead and read the complete um, uh, uh, comment that was submitted into um, the city clerk's office. 
Mr. Pachuca indicates, one year ago last June, I purchased a home in this lovely neighborhood with my husband in hopes of creating a home and, and start a family in the city of Pomona. We purchased a home on Mountain View, Garfield, Park Colony. What we thought would be our dream home has turned into, into a house in a neighborhood of nightmares, endless nightmares. My neighbors and I are living in a life of hell and the terror that, that we are experiencing on an hourly basis is now far too much for us to bear. We now have no recourse but to extend our outrage to the city of Pomona, city council and all the rest of the residents in our community. The heart team has been battling a losing war with the homeless, transients and vileness of what we are experiencing. Our alley, our homes, our beautiful park has gone to the pits of an unbelievable depth that cannot be allowed to deteriorate further. We are realizing this is far beyond repair unless you, the city council, listen to our pleas for a solution. Daily encounters of threats towards us, including surrounding my, surrounding my neighbors with homeless on bikes, cussing and threatening as we take out our trash cans, as a civil resident that is minding their own business, to actually be so terrified, my neighbors have to run to their homes and slam the doors for protection. Is this the way we are going to be forced to live? Our animals are threatened, let loose, and we have to claim them at the Humane Society and pay money that was not necessary due to the lack of respect for their lives as well as ours. We have had emergency Zoom meetings held by Lieutenant Brian Haggerty, Councilwoman Antibaros Cole, and the Mountain View neighbors that are afraid to come home from work and discover something so bad that they are afraid to come home late from their jobs and find someone in their house waiting or lurking around corners. They invade our properties and steal from us. The alley has become a place of drugs, prostitutes, homeless encampments, and a literal trash dump, not to mention the accumulation of feces and urine that smells and attracts rodents and other pests. These people are continuously threatening to jump the fences, poison our pets, and have actually come to our front door banging and demanding money. Single moms and senior citizens with disabilities are part of our neighborhood, and we are feel fearful for them as well as ourselves. We have an overwhelming amount of dispatch calls at all hours of the day and night begging for patrol for an officer to come to the rescue, and we have emails, which I will put on record here tonight of the communication of the above. The HART team has relentless, relentlessly battled with us, and we had Public Works Director Rene Guerrero and Jerry Perez sur, uh, surveying the alley behind our homes to help us, to protect us, and to find a solution. Councilwoman Ontiveros Cole and HART team have been very supportive, and the strong requirement needed for our protection of our lives and homes is for Council to move forward in closing our alley to keep these people who have created a haven for themselves in our alley that we have had to clean and discover contaminated needles and other undesirable things. The hard team can only do so much. They vocally share their own concern with us that the closing of this alley will solve a major chronic problem that has taken over our neighborhood. We, the neighbors who have risked our lives and continue to risk our lives are not going to put up with this anymore. We are standing together with our police and our district four city council representative to make the remaining city council members who we believe will see the urgency for our serious request to be able to enjoy the quality of life that we deserve, that we pay for with our taxes, our jobs, and the countless nights that we discuss this detrimental situation. There are many young children in our neighborhood that cannot even leave the, com the confines of their own yards, and even that is a risky place given the current situation, let alone play at the park that is littered with needles and trash and, quite frankly, really scary people. I ask you, is this the quality of life you would want to live? I ask you, would you want to bring a child to a place that causes danger, grief, and uncertainty? I think not. We stand together and we will, we will not take no for an answer. Not when it comes to our lives, our safety and well-being. Sincerely, respectfully and concerned, Joshua Machuca and the neighbors of Garfield Park Colony. Next comment is from Kizzy Moore. Ms. Moore says, I'm a resident of District 6 and we have been experiencing an increase in speeding on Town Avenue, specifically between Bangor Street to Laverne Avenue. Throughout the day and especially at night, you can hear how fast the cars are traveling. Over the last several years, residents have become victims of unsafe speed and reckless driving, suffering financial losses for vehicle repairs and replacement. I was a victim and my vehicle was pushed down the street under the truck. I was recently informed by a resident that two cars traveling north lined up just a little above the light to race their vehicles. Residents have become victims of road rage. They fear getting in and out of their vehicles as the cars are not slowing down and becoming confrontational. A resident had to sit in their vehicle for 30 minutes before exiting safely. That resident is my daughter, so as a parent, you can understand my concern. I'm requesting the city of Pomona to assess these intersections for potential enhancements to ensure the safety of their residents. We want safer streets. This is a serious matter and we should be rectified sooner rather than later. Next comment comes from Beth Brooks. Ms. Brooks indicates the election is over and a new city council soon will be sworn in. 
Before this happens, there are residents in District 6 who would appreciate clarification on the appropriate process for communicating with our council person. During the past four years, our emails were ignored, our telephone calls were not returned, and our business letters were not acknowledged. There were public invitations by Mr. Torres to contact him through social media, but many of us have been blocked from commenting on his page. Moving forward in a spirit of working together, it would be beneficial to know how this line of communication is going to take place in the future. I believe this position represents all residents in District 6, not just a chosen few. We would like to work with Mr. Torres to build a better community, but it is unclear how this can be accomplished. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Next comment is from Virginia Madrigal. Ms. Madrigal says, about two years ago, some residents from South Pomona, including myself, attended several planning commission and city council meetings because of our concerns with the development of the former credit union property on the southeast corner of Gary Avenue and Olive Street. Our concerns were that the owner of the property was demolishing and renovating the property without the permits required by city code. He was taking and piling up debris from the old air conditioning system, not following the guidelines for the disposal of asbestos and contaminating the air around the apartments where children play. At the time, he refused to allow AQMD and code inspectors on the property. It took a long time and several complaints for him to comply with the requirements he needed, he needed to meet. His intent was to open a boarding school for Chinese students so they could come and study in the United States. When the permits were granted, we were assured by the city that there would be oversight on compliance. Here we are today. All you have to do is look at the property. Bamboo planted to hide the barbed wire in front by the sidewalk, trash all over the back that can cause a fire. I know Councilmember Garcia has been working on it, but she needs cooperation to resolve our concerns. Next comments from Diane Garina. Ms. Garina says, please, in please include for discussion what the city is going to do to provide safety to the community in Pomona and the street on Hamilton and Colony Drive from this happening again by a drunk driver or any driver that speeds on this residential street. Since my sister's de death, there has been other accidents on Hamilton. Rosalia? Yes. I'm sorry, you know, there is an item on consent regarding Colony. Okay. Right Would it make sense to read that comment? We could pull that item. Absolutely, there's two comments, so I'll go ahead and hold those off for um, the will that, will that be okay? Just, sure. just so just so we make sure that the comment is related to the agenda item. No problem. We'll go ahead and we can and hold them off for the consent calendar. And those are those are the two final comments. And I believe we have two attendees that are waiting to speak. Uh, first attendee would be Eunice Russell. Ms. Russell, go ahead. Can you hear me? We can hear you. All right, thank you. I'm Eunice Russell, a longtime resident, and I want to comment on the cannabis licensing process. You all know that I believe the process was biased and feel you did a number of things that even though they may or may not have been legal were definitely questionable. You supported a process that was unfair and showed partiality to special interest groups and the third party consultants you hired were unnecessary, costly, and only served to allow you to keep your hands clean while they did the dirt because in the end, the city staff did the final score using the same parameters as the third party consultants proving that they were an unnecessary expense. As a matter of fact, a number of cities are being sued behind the antics of this third party consultant in handling their cannabis application process. Our process was supposed to be anonymous and applicant information removed before submission to the third party consultants, but there was no redaction of information and the same third party consultants did background checks, also did the scoring. The public input was a joke because all the scoring was done behind closed doors. And in the end, didn't you give a license to an applicant that lost their original location after the application process closed, knowing that they should have been disqualified. I know you all may have something to say in opposition to this, but I challenge you to prove what I'm saying is untrue. Prove it, don't just disagree, because only one of us could be telling the truth if, you, if you're saying I'm lying. So just prove it. With that being said, I pray in the name of Jesus for each and every one of you. And for those employed by you, I pray for our city, our state, our nation, and our planet. I pray that if you don't know Christ, that he will reveal himself to you. And if you do know Christ, I pray that you will be a doer of the word and not a hearer only and that you may grow, excuse me, and that you walk in the word and not around it so that you may grow from being children of God into becoming sons of God that are led by the Holy Spirit. I bind the evil spirits of division, greed, prejudice, complacency, bigotry, treachery, and trickery. 
I pray that our city and those in it prosper and that our leadership will govern by what is morally right to do rather than what they can legally get away with doing. I pray that forgiveness and healing will touch each and every heart in the mighty name of Jesus and all that are in agreement can say amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Our next uh, speaker will be Tony Navarro. Ms. Navarro, go ahead. Hi, good evening. Um, hello, Mayor and Council Members and, council and City Staff. Speaking tonight, Executive Director of Tri-City Mental Health, but speaking as a co-chair of the Mayor's COVID-19 Action Committee Health and Wellness Subcommittee. Just wanted to uh, bring to everyone's attention, in, in addition to the obvious, and many have stated tonight, the surge happening and asking our Pomona residents to uh, wear their masks, stay six feet apart, wash your hands regularly, keep yourselves healthy, and do your best to limit visiting next week during Thanksgiving time. We also wanted to bring to your attention a couple of things that have happened during the past week that are available for, um, for our residents to view, to get more information about how to stay healthy during this time. Last Wednesday, um, the committee hosted a webinar that was a presentation by Dr. Gluckstein from the hospital, expert and um, uh, very compassionate leader on infectious disease at the Pomona Valley Hospital, spoke on how to stay healthy, gave the information about COVID-19 and the flu, um, and talked and dispelled some myths around the vaccine and encouraged people to stay healthy. Also, we had speakers from East Valley Medical Center who uh, spoke on nutrition and wellness during this time to keep ourselves emotionally and physically healthy, keeping our immune system strong. That webinar will be posted um, starting tomorrow on the city website uh, for anyone to view. It was about an hour long. There was also some question and answers from the community. So I encourage people if they have questions about COVID versus the flu to look to that. The last thing I wanna to say tonight is many people have talked about um, limiting our time together during Thanksgiving, rethinking and uh, reimagining how we will spend Thanksgiving together, but yet apart. Um, and so what's gonna happen there is, right, we're gonna have people who are alone this holiday season, um, and maybe that are used to being in large gatherings with their families, but, but live alone. And so the Health and Wellness Subcommittee would like to remind everyone that a few months ago, we started a campaign called Call for Pomona, really encouraging residents to call four of their friends, neighbors, loved ones every day in Pomona to check in, say hello, share a story, just share some, some cheer during this holiday season. Those calls and those check-ins really help to reduce isolation and the increase um, in mental health issues that we are seeing, the increase in calls for assistance to Tri-City Mental Health. Also just wanna say that for any residents experiencing difficulties with their emotions and needing to talk to someone 24 seven, they can call 866-623-9500. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. And our next speaker is uh, calling in from the phone. If you could please state your name for the record. Speaker. Hi, I am Daryl Cruz. People are more willing. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, people are more willing to be tested when they believe the results. If people were told the test is wrong, most of the time they would not waste their time. If you tell them they are positive, but many people are asymptomatic, they will test and believe the results. People are stupid. I don't believe any of this COVID-19 BS that the government is trying to sell us. My first clue was when they said all cannabis business is essential. How could it possibly be? after the way they treated me. Next clue was getting emails from government people like that ignorant and hateful Norma Torres. She was totally against sick people getting access to medicine when I was trying to bring it to Pomona. She has proven she has no right to speak about health issues and expect anyone to listen. I heard Dr. Farrar with the County of Los Angeles lie about cannabis dispensaries in November of 2017, and I have spoke many times about how she is not qualified for her job, 
But myself, I misspoke about her when I thanked the Board of Supervisors for saving hundreds of lives by giving her a government job and taking her out of public process, practice. I was wrong. She's not even a medical doctor. She's a doctor of social science. And as a result of her government job, she has caused the deaths of thousands in nursing homes. When Councilman Robert Torres has talked about COVID-19 and how he helps people at Pomona get masks and sanitizers, I thought about how he said the imperiled Councilman should talk with friends and longtime political allies who helped him get elected to office to decide what to do. So I wondered, what purpose is really behind this? The Torres name, you know, is well known for lying and cheating and destroying good people trying to bring medicine to the people of Pomona on a not-for-profit basis in 2006. If you get the vaccine, you get a headache and flu symptoms for a day. Some say they are going to go through this multiple times every year. They say because the nanobots in the vaccine have to be recharged, but likely, more likely, because it provides a revenue stream to big pharma, the health industry, Wall Street, and the government. The truth, the true losers of this are truth, freedom, and American people. Again, government picks the winners, like in cannabis. The winners are big government, big business, and the losers are the ones who risked everything to bring cannabis to areas less served. Please, please stop torturing me. Either give me a license or stop this nonsense of thinking someone else is going to get a license to do what I asked for in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, and in 2009 when you chose to use excessive force to remove a dispensary rather than give me my license. Mr. Cruz, your three minutes are up. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers that would like to speak? Uh, Andrew and Sinditas? Go ahead, speaker. Right. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity to share. My name is Andy Encinas. I am the new program director for a federal grant that our agency, Latino Family Institute, has secured for three years. We will be located in this beautiful city of Pomona. I was born and raised in Pomona and worked at different agencies. Uh, we will be providing services for the children who have been separated at the border, have been detained, and we will be working towards reunifying them with their parents and sponsors. Um, we'll be providing um, medical care, dental care, uh, legal assistance, case management, uh, mental health, and education. Um, the office is located there on 4th Street. The address is 436 West 4th Street, Suite 100. And uh, it's right below Family Service of Pomona Valley, a wonderful counseling center where I worked in the past. Um, to, to make the program successful, we are looking for volunteer bilingual foster care families uh, who can house the children on a very short basis. We expect the turnaround a reunification to take place under a month, uh, 21 days to um, under a month if everything goes well. So uh, families can be located in the city of Pomona, other neighboring communities. We have reached out to some of the churches, other organizations that can uh, assist us in making this program uh, a success. So um, I just wanted to have the opportunity to present um, that we will be working in the city of Pomona and um, working towards the, like I said, the reunification of the children, their families and sponsors. So if you can be of any assistance or support, uh, guidance or giving advice where I could find uh, an outreach to these families, uh, that would greatly be appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Encinas. And I believe that's the final, that was the final speaker, Mayor. Thank you, Rosalie. Can you make sure that the council gets uh, Mr. Encinas' uh, contact information or if he can email us his contact information, that would be appreciated. Will do. 
Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next item. Next item is consent calendar. All matters under the consent calendar may be enacted by a single motion without separate discussion. If discussion or a separate vote on any item is desired by a council member, that item may be removed from the consent calendar and considered separately. All consent items pulled for discussion will be limited to five minutes. If they are not enacted upon within five minutes, the mayor will move that consent item to the end of the agenda after consideration of the public hearings. Any motion relating to an ordinance or resolution shall also waive the reading of the ordinance or resolution and include its introduction or adoption as appropriate. And Mayor, as a reminder, we do have two uh, email comments for item number seven. You're on mute, Mayor. Yeah. Mayor, you're on mute. Sorry, yeah, are there any other, uh... Yeah, so I, I would recommend that we uh, pull item seven. Uh, and also, are there any other items that a council member would like to, um, uh, to, 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 to remove before we vote on the consent calendar? I have a question on item number 22, Mr. Sandu, Mayor Sandu. That's fine, we'll go ahead and pull that and then um, we'll go from there. Any others? Okay, good. So uh, can I get a motion to approve uh, all consent calendar items minus seven and minus 22. So moved. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Okay. So a first by Councilmember Lestro and a second by Councilmember Honoros Cole. Uh, Rosalia, will you please do the roll call? Garcia? Yes. Preciado? Yes. Antiveros Cole? Yes. Lestro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? Yes. Okay, so let's go to item seven. And number seven is uh, stop signs on Hamilton Boulevard at Colony Drive. I'll go ahead and read the two email comments now. First comment from Diane Garina. Please include for discussion with what the city is gonna do to provide safety to the community in Pomona and the street on Hamilton and Colony Drive from this happening again by a drunk driver or any driver that speeds on this residential street. Since my sister's death, there's been other accidents on Hamilton Street. Please take this serious. I will be on the Zoom meeting. Thank you. And the second and final comment is from Beatrice Bozomir. What is going on with the street safety for Hamilton? The speed is ridiculous. People are losing their lives. Stop signs, speed bumps, something needs to be done. And that was the final comment, Mayor. Okay. And if, uh, thank you. Uh, and if we can ask uh, Renee just briefly to share what this action will do, uh, item seven, uh, our public works director, Renee Guerrero, are you on the line? I am here, thank you. And Could you just briefly just say what, what this action will do as it relates to Colony and Hamilton? Sure, uh, what, what the rec recommendation is, is to uh, direct staff to install stop signs at the intersection of Hamilton and Colony Drive. Uh, there is an existing stop sign uh, on Colony Drive, but none existing in the northbound or southbound direction of Hamilton. And so basically what uh, this uh, request is and what the recommendation is, is uh, asking council to approve installation of two new stop signs, one in each direction on Hamilton Drive at the intersection of Colony. Okay, great. Uh, Hamilton Boulevard at Colony Drive. Great, thank you, Mr. Guerrero. Uh, let me see if there are any comments from the city council. Are there any questions or comments from city council members? Uh, and if we can just go to, let's start with uh, council member Preciado, any comments? So I wanna thank you, uh, Renee. I know that uh, we have uh, been doing continued work on this street. It was uh, very unfortunate what happened. Um, the stop sign won't help with drunk drivers and those that are choose to continue to speed. But I know that this isn't the only thing that we're gonna be looking into for this street. Um, and seeing what else uh, can be done, uh, especially for the negligence. I'd like to thank Mayor Sandoval and um, uh, Mayor Sandoval, if you can uh, help me with the name of the gentleman who helped put up a wall on, on a, a fence. Frank, yeah, Frank Smith from Frank Smith Masonry. Uh, thank you very much to them as well for helping us in, uh, in this situation. So thank you very much. Uh, Vice Mayor Garcia, do you have any comments? I would just like to extend my condolences to the family one, once more. It is unfortunate that so many people 
make such poor choices, uh, whether it be speeding or driving drunk, that that judgment call uh, affects more people than we can possibly ever imagine when that when that judgment is faulty. So I do want to extend my condolences. I do want to thank the mayor and council member uh, Preciado for reaching out to members of the community to help uh, the family build that fence. And I want to thank uh, Public Works and our city staff for their response. We are, the city cannot be held responsible for, for the decisions of others, but we try to mitigate it with uh, traffic calming measures, diet, signage, and I thank our staff for being open to all those options when it comes to um, trying to curb speeding in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Ana Briscoe. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I, again, I would like to extend my condolences to the family that lost their loved one. Um, the way I see it now is the fact that unless we slow down as motorists or quit drinking when you are driving your car, this is going to continue. I've had so many conversations with Public Works, um, Mr. Guerrero, in regards to various types of ways of how we can slow down traffic. Let's hope that this stop sign will give us some help because whoever's behind that wheel is the responsible party that has to be reckoned with. We have to deal with sadness. We have to deal with many unfortunate situations. Um, I think that is one, one of the reasons why I decided to put the imaging calming machines on Town Avenue, Indian Hill, San Bernardino Road, and east, uh, westbound going on East Alvarado. I'm driving these streets and I'm watching and I'm observing now a little bit of a slower pace vehicle. I put these for a reason to save lives. This is what we have to do. We have to start saving lives, even if it's with some type of a apparatus. But the thing is, it's the person behind the wheel that is responsible. And, you know, I just want to extend that, that advice. Being a nurse and seeing these, these injuries when I was working hospitals, it's no fun. It's, it's not an a, a enjoyment, but we have to do it. Now, the thing is this, we have to understand that this is what we have to do. People, residents of Pomona, extend that advice and let them know that this is what we are experiencing now. We're losing lives. We're watching people just, you know, cave into a, a, a bedroom. I mean, this is, this is outrageous. This is sad, but it's outrageous. And it's something that we really need to start thinking about. Be careful how you're driving, texting, drinking, drugs, any of these things. And, you know, I, you know, I'm very thankful that I had a chance to go ahead and get these imaging uh, calming machines. And I think Mr. Lustro, Council Lustro is also getting additional ones because they do work. I really see a difference. So, you know, I would like to see more, you know, and, um, you know, this is all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Molestro? Um, I, I too was greatly saddened when this, when this unfortunate accident occurred that, that could, have, could have been avoided. Um, the, as Councilmember Preciado said, uh, the installing a three-way stop at this location will, I think, improve safety in that neighborhood. Uh, but for the responsible drivers, for people who think that the, the rules of the road don't apply to them, we're still going to have issues, not just in, in, in this neighborhood on Hamilton Boulevard, but, but throughout the city, as, as all of the council members can attest to. Um, so uh, I, I certainly I support this item. Uh, if it improves safety even a little bit in the neighborhood, then we've accomplished something. Um, but I would, I would say to everyone in the community, quit speeding through our neighborhoods because you're putting your life at risk and those of innocent people at risk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council Member Torres. I want to thank the uh, Public Works Department for uh, being um, um, for responding to this and, and addressing this issue here. 
Um, the fact of the matter is uh, there's a lot of issues like this, um, calls from residents throughout different parts of the city. We've heard someone from uh, North Pomona talk about Town Avenue being a hot zone for speeders. Um, so this is uh, one example of a good thing that the city of Pomona has done to address uh, one particular area. But the fact is we need to do more and look at all the areas of the city, particularly the high traffic zone areas um, where a lot of these issues are and complaints are occurring. Um, one of the things that I'm hoping that the council looks at in the future is this idea of bringing back the speed bumps. Because We've just talked about we can change all the laws, but the reality is people don't change their behaviors and some folks are not going to obey the speed limit. So that's why we have to install other traffic calming measures like the speed humps, which force people to slow down unless they want to have damage to their vehicle, of course. Um, but I just want to stress and while the community is listening, I want to encourage the family of, of that person who passed away, unfortunately. I wanna thank them for helping them bring this issue forward. And I would personally ask them to continue to press the council for more issues, uh, for more uh, stop signs, not just in that part of the neighborhood, but throughout the city, because right now they're actually listening to the community. Thank you. Uh, I just have a few words to share. Um, I uh, actually, uh, shortly after this happened, uh, council member Preciado and I actually visited the family uh, and uh, expressed our condolences. And it was through that conversation that several things happened, uh, which part of the culmination of that effort was this item before you today. But one of the things that we did, and I just have to acknowledge the fact that a group of community members came together to assist the family. Uh, if you were to drive there, before the accident happened, there was a chain link fence. Uh, and through the efforts of a amazing, amazing person uh, that I had reached out to, uh, his name is Frank Smith of Frank Smith Masonry, which is located over on Pomona Boulevard. I shared with Frank the situation and I asked, is there anything that you can do to help assist this family? And do you know of other entities, any other contractors that could help this family. And he said, Mayor, I'll go ahead and give it some thought and uh, let you know. And literally uh, the next day he called me. And by that time he had already reached out to Angeles Block Company, which donated the slump stone, r, r Leonard that donated the rebar, American Equipment Rentals, which donated, um, not sure exactly what they donated, but he, he said a mini X, uh, Ruben Manriquez from Cone Construction, which is a Pomona company, which set up and poured the footing. Sean Underwood, who volunteered to dig the footing. FSNM first the labor, equipment, and material to construct the wall. And Valley Vista helped to haul, haul the dirt that was dug up to their site. And that would not have happened without Frank Smith. And so Frank, you're probably not watching this meeting, but thank you so much. I know the family's appreciative. I've got a meeting tomorrow with a gate person that's going to go out there and look at uh, have building a wrought iron uh, gate entry gate that will connect the two walls. I share this with you because I think that sometimes people don't always know what we do as elected officials. This is an incredibly caring council. Uh, this is a council that um, we, we talk about compassion, but we can't just talk about compassion as some kind of just abstract word. It actually has to represent something. It actually has to result in action. And in this particular case, this item reflects that. Uh, but the overall action reflects a deeper commitment to community. And Frank's business is in Pomona. And he's a 78 year old man uh, who has uh, been committed to providing jobs locally here uh, to Pomona people and people in the region and uh, was able to help this family in their time of need. So if you actually go by Colony, and Hamilton today, you will see a brand new concrete brick, uh, a new concrete wall that surrounds the location. And we're looking at some bollards as well uh, to help support that effort. So with that said, I think uh, this is a pretty straightforward. I just need a motion to approve or- Can, can uh, I still I, ask a, another, one more quick question, Mayor Sandoval? Yes. 
Um, Renee, uh, as, I, as I remember, there will be a meeting, um, an agenda item in December or in a future council meeting about um, speed bumps, is that correct? That is correct. The uh, second meeting of December, I'll be making a brief presentation on speed bumps. Thank you, sir. And uh, with that, Mayor Sandoval, I would like to move the item, uh, motion to approve item number seven. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, Council Member Garcia, or I should say Vice Mayor Garcia, second. Uh, let's do a roll call vote. Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Montevideo Cole? Yes. Lustro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? Yes. And so we'll move on to item 22. Uh, quick comments. Uh, you want to read the item and then Council Member uh, Preciado has a comment or question? Okay. Item number 22 is approve agreements with Planned Parenthood and Caltrans for decorated block wall maintenance and management. Uh, I know this is more of a maintenance agreement, but I don't know. I think maybe it pertains to Anita. Um, is, is there already a decorated block wall or is there going to be a decorated block wall? And I was just curious on what that's going to look like. Um, I know that this item was mainly about maintenance. Uh, thank you, uh, 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 Council Member Preciado, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, and this is actually a joint project with Public Works and Development Services, but so currently there's only a chain link fence there. Uh, the fence will be improved with a decorative uh, wrought iron and block wall um, that will be done by Planned Parenthood. What this is is an agreement so that if something happens to that wall in the future because it's in Caltrans right of way, um, there's an agreement to uh, repair it um, and the city can come on and do that because it's Caltrans property, Caltrans doesn't enter into maintenance agreements with private entities. So there, thereby the city had to get involved and kind of be the third party to help facilitate that agreement. So it's a three party agreement between uh, us and Caltrans and then we have a separate agreement with Planned Parenthood and that's what that is. Got it. Thank you very much. I wasn't sure what, what we we're going to be seeing there, um, but that helps. Thank you. Uh, unless anybody has anything else, uh, thank you for allowing me to ask the question. I'm, I'll be happy to move the item. Hey, Vice Mayor Garcia, you have a question or comment? I just, You're on mute. Hi. Uh, just to go along with uh, what Council Member uh, Preciado is asking about the aesthetics, would this be matching or do we know that it will be matching the yellow, lime green, and blue uh, facade of the state glass or poly glass uh, wall that is currently adjacent to the Planned Hood, Plant Parenthood Clinic off of Gary. And Renee, you can jump in if you know, I don't think it's matching in color. I think it's more of a wrought iron, if, I, if I'm correct. Yeah, it, it will have some wrought iron. I think it also have some wood in it and there might be some color matches here and there, but it won't be an entire a uh, wall of uh, blue and yellow. I think it'll just be more of a solid, uh, you know, material, but with maybe some enhancements in there. So beautiful protection, all for it. I will be happy to second the motion. Okay, if we can do a roll call vote. Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Monteveros Cole? Yes. Lestro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? Yes. So we move on to item 26. Um, we move out of consent to item 26. Discussion calendar item number 26 is the finding of public benefit to the community at large, recommended expenditures and recap of expended funds. And we have no speakers for this item. Okay, uh, any comments or questions by the council? Okay, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a second. Okay, roll call vote. Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Montiveros Cole? Yes. Lustro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? Yes. Okay, next item. Next item is item 57. It's receive and file the fiscal year 2019-20 and audited year end overview. Review the fiscal year 2020-21 general fund first quarter budget and adopt a resolution amending the fiscal year 2020-2021 operating budget. I assume we have a staff presentation on this item. Yes, we do. Okay, uh, that sounds like Andrew Mowbray. Andrew? 
And do we, about, but before you begin, do we have any speakers on the item? We do not have any emailed speakers. I see one hand up. Okay, all right. You are on, Mr. Mowbray. Okay, thank you, uh, Honorable Mayor and members of City Council. Uh, tonight, um, we have the uh, FY 2019-20 unaudited year-end overview, as well as the first quarter budget review for FY 2021 and uh, budget resolution approving an amendment. Um, I'm gonna share my screen right now to bring a short presentation. Can everyone see that okay? Okay. Alrighty. So we'll start with the 1920 uh, overview. Um, based on unaudited figures to date, um, we're on track to end at about 98% of budget, um, which is estimated to create a minimal deficit of about 209,000, um, as you can see in the table. Um, actual general fund revenue, revenue is closely aligned with expenditures. Um, expenditure savings are almost 2 million compared to budget. However, expenses are closely aligned with year-end estimates due to salary savings as a result of vacancies in several departments uh, that were not filled at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, general fund revenues came in uh, 2 million less than budget, however, exceeded year in estimates by 5.6 million. Um, during budget deliberations, you may remember, uh, we were projecting uh, major shortfalls in three major categories, what we call the big three. Um, but we still keep getting revenue sources as far back into August 30th of 2020. Um, significant or the most significant difference was sales tax, which came in 4.6 million more than anticipated. Um, this significant change um, explained by our city sales tax consultant related to three key factors. Um, first, Pomona has a, a heavier weighting in categories such as building and construction that perform much better and were less impacted by COVID-19 than originally anticipated. Second, the countywide pool uh, grew faster, primarily to stronger uh, anticipated impact from the Wayfair um, legislation which uh, allows the taxation of additional internet sales, um, which relates to um, the third item, or excuse me, which relates to uh, online shopping. So basically online shopping had a lot to do with it, which um, you know, affects our sales tax and our measure PG. And then third, uh, the deferral and loans that were offered to businesses, businesses um, um, didn't occur at the end of fiscal 1920 as anticipated. And then lastly, um, property tax did come in about a half a million more than anticipated. So um, that really explains, um, you know, we thought we were gonna have a much larger deficit um, as we went through the budget process, but in the end, uh, we had a minimal or almost not. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this is a summary of uh, the first quarter um, for the current fiscal year, 2021. Um, as you can see, we you know we adopted the budget June 29th. We had about a 5.9 million dollar deficit. Um, amendments to date um, total 1.5. Uh, the majority of that's related to the CRF money that we approved back in September. Um, so now that brings our deficit to about 4.4 million. Um, within this report are amendments uh, totaling um, a net of about 4.7 million which um, if approved tonight, we will be um, predicting a, projecting a surplus of about 276,000. Um, we'll go in more detail on the period uh, three numbers or uh, numbers through September um, throughout the report. So first looking at general fund revenues, um, this chart compares this time last year to this time last fiscal year. This is just to show you um, you know, we get a lot of our revenues later in the fiscal year. Um, this time last year, we were about 10% received. This time this year, about 11%. Uh, you can see the percentages are very similar. Um, so just we're on track of receiving um, revenues on the same percentage basis. Um, just a reminder, uh, you know, the major general fund revenues, property taxes on part of date. Um, and uh, it's one of the only sources received through the first quarter, or the piece of it is the unsecured property tax. Um, one thing to note um, in 2020, the Los Angeles County Office of Assessor put out an annual report and Pomona is listed as one of the 20 highest value cities 
with a 7.3 change in assessed value. Um, staff will revisit this category at mid-year and may increase revenue estimates um, if they um, closely align or need to be increased. Um, sales tax, of course, we talked about that a little bit with 1920, comes from three sources. Uh, we get our, our main sales tax, the 1% share. We have our um, measure PG, QUT tax, and then the public safety augmentation. Um, is important, uh, you know, again, online sales are helping that category. And again, we'll revisit that in mid-year um, if we think of uh, increase. UUT uh, collected again on our utilities such as water, gas, electricity, and telephone um, seem to be coming in okay, except telecom continues to um, be less um, each and every year, it seems. And then our other major categories, other taxes, uh, those represent, you know, our TOT, our business license, our property transfer tax. Um, those are coming in um, aligned. And then other sources such as fees, permits, licenses, and other miscellaneous as well. Um, one thing I wanted to um, discuss tonight or, you know, bring up is um, an update on the Citizens Oversight Committee. Um, just a reminder, they serve as an advisory um, group is respected to the um, sales tax measure. They first had their first meeting in July of 2019. So they've been meeting for over a year now. Um, at the August 2020 COC meeting, the committee approved a revisions to the original bylaws, which now includes a schedule that has been structured to coincide with various finance budget presentation items. Uh, and now they meet four times a year versus the original two times a year. Um, for example, we met in October and we were able to give the committee a preview of some of these first quarter figures in draft format. And in February, when we meet again, we'll give them a preview of uh, some of the mid-year figures. So um, just wanna bring that to everyone's attention and you know, any feedback um, from council on the COC you know, is always welcome, um, but group uh, will be uh, you know, materializing and uh, we have a good committee moving forward. Is, does that complete your presentation, Mr. Mowbray? No, I still have some, a few more slides off. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I just wanted to know. I, I, heard, I heard a pause there, so I thought maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah we can, we can uh, take feedback on that at the end if you want. I just wanted to um, make sure you had opportunity for that. Um, so moving along to the uh, expenditure figures, um, looking at them by category, um, personnel, controllable expenses required, allocations to utilities, um, we've spent about 19% of our budget um, for the first quarter going for the first three months. Then uh, take a, a more detailed look by department. Um, same thing, 19% um, overall. You can see many of the uh, departments are coming in a little under, um, and we'll talk about that more um, as we get through the presentation. Um, but you'll see um, the only department that's really aligned is fire because that's a, obviously a structured amount per month um, per the LA County fire contract. So part of uh, tonight's presentation and action before you is uh, some appropriations and revenue requests um, in the form of a resolution. Um, as you may remember back in July, um, there was approval to move forward with the pension obligation bonds that were is issued in August. Um, as part of this action, um, you know, we talked about strategies that um, council approved and in this uh, action is 5 million of unappropriate general fund revenue related to that um, um, action. Um, also included or proposed in this action is 215,000 for the police um, set program um, for overtime. Um, 56,000 is requested for annual sales tax monitoring auditing services. Um, that's an annual contract um, that was omitted from the budget um, that um, we need um, that helps us with monitoring our sales tax and um, auditing taxes. Um, we're asking for 10K um, for an update to the city's financial forecast model. Um, you may recall having that um, a few years ago uh, related to the measure PG, but we'd like to um, do an update of that. And we'll talk about that more in the big picture coming forward in this presentation. Um, 52,000 to fund two graffiti removal workers so that's uh, two graffiti removal workers 
for the rest of the fiscal year. Those are authorized positions that were unfunded um, as part of the budget um, process. 50% um, would be paid from the general fund and 50% would be paid for from some transportation funds. And then another cleanup item is uh, 28,000 for redis redistribution of fleet allocation. Um, our oath grant um, is not entitled to pay for the fleet allocation. So we need to move uh, that allocation over to uh, the general fund. Uh, these are what I call uh, the net zero general fund appropriation revenue estimate requests. They're just cleanup, not cleanup items by me. Um, the first item kind of is, is when we did the swimming pool reduction, uh, we took uh, the reduction kind of on the wrong side of revenue expenditures. So this is just a switcheroo on that and uh, has no a net zero change to uh, the general fund budget. Uh, the next side, three items are library related. Again, uh, donations uh, for 10,000 from the um, public, Pomona Public Library Foundation for security collection management and cloud library platform. Um, we'll get $10,000 revenue and $10,000 expenditure. Um, crisis collections funding via the Southern California Library Cooperative, um, 5,000 on both sides. And then uh, the library um, has another um, grant for just uh, $300 for a Zoom-based storytelling program celebrating Latino Heritage Month. Um, again, those are net zero changes, but definitely um, help out the, um, the library. Moving on to our non-general fund appropriation requests. Um, the 1.5 million is unappropriation from non-general funds related to the pension obligation bonds um, and the strategy that was uh, brought forward. Um, and then the second part is also part of it. So now we need to uh, pay the pension obligation bonds. Um, so we have to take funds from the various um, funds in the city. And so we have to set up a, um, an internal service fund um, to pay for that debt payment of 3.4 for the fiscal year. So that's uh, what this item entails. Uh, 239,000 in supplemental law enforcement services account for some grant funds carryover for the police department. Uh, $9,000 appropriation of the senior nutrition grant uh, related to um, a previous uh, council item. Um, again, here's the 52K, um, the other half of the two graffiti removal workers. This would be the funding for the transportation funds. Um, and then this 28K, uh, redistribution of the fleet allocation uh, should be reflected as a negative. That's the piece that um, will need to come out of the oath grant and be charged to the general fund. Okay. So the city's fund balance policy, just a reminder, um, you know, that that's what drives, um, you know, um, the objectives of the policy establishes formal reserves. Um, just to give you a big picture using all these figures where we're at today, Looking at our 1819, so that's our actual, that's our cap for comprehensive annual financial report figures. This is final, this is where our fund balance was or is. Um, based on these 1920 numbers, if everything closes as we need to use about 209,000 from reserves. So that'll bring our fund balance at about 21.8, which is still um, based on the total expenditure projection, that'll be about an 18.9, almost 19% fund balance. Um, the benchmark again being 17. Um, if everything in this budget, the uh, amendments are approved, um, we're projecting about a $276,000 surplus this year. Um, and if we've, everything came in aligned, um, we would finish about 2.6% above the uh, benchmark amount. So um, definitely some things have changed since uh, the budget was brought forward in um, late June. So in conclusion, um, you know, the general fund will use about 209,000 from general fund reserves for the 1920 um, closeout. Uh, the general fund fiscal year date, revenues are 11% and 20% um, with the amended figures. Uh, the adopted budget again was projected at 5.9. Um, and since adoption is projected a $4.4 million deficit. However, uh, with these recommendations, um, it will result in a surplus of 276,000. All city departments will continue to operate within budget and will monitor expenditures and all revenues will need to come in on target or above projections to end the fiscal year. Um, just final um, slide, just going forward, 
um, items to note um, that we'll be bringing forward the budget schedule, what we call the budget kickoff in January to council for the 21-22 process. Um, we'd like to uh, update the city's financial forecast model as included in the appropriation requests, um, which will tie into updating the city's fiscal sustainability and fund balance policies. Um, as you may remember, the J July 6th action, uh, part of it was um, to develop some long-term pension liability reserves. So we want to bring forward some options with that. And then um, one item, this is really a recommendation and up for more discussion or we can talk about down the road is um, when we bring the mid-year report um, presented to council, um, we'd like to maybe bring it in a form of a study session as a standalone item. And then one of the main goals as part of that is we'd like to bring forward some preliminary uh, 21, 22 figures at that time, um, as much as data that we have at that time. Um, but to give you, you know, and the um, community an idea of, you know, some forecasted figures for the upcoming budget year. So with that, any questions? And before we take any questions from the city council, um, I just wanted to ask Rosalie if we had any, do we have any speakers um, on this item? Mayor, at this time, we do not. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna start with uh, Councilmember Preciado and then we'll move our way here. Andrew, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, in, in my opinion, um, I mean, when you're looking at uh, how we were gonna project to end the, 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 the budget last for last year, how we're gonna close out, with a projected around five to $6 million deficit and closing it off at 209,000 for a city our size during the pandemic. I mean, that was just incredible. And that, you know, that's, that's a big thank you to you and a big thank you to all the departments who looked through their, uh, looked, looked through their budgets to, to do the best we could. Um, and I find that to be a, a success. Um, I know that's tied into many things as well as, you know, the fact that we did the 10 year financial forecast that will that helped us do the sales tax which allowed us to have the uh four million dollars over what we first projected on sales tax and what i'd like to uh do is give a big thank you to the residents for for having the confidence on on council and staff in voting that in and as well as i'd like to ask you to continue shopping pomona because the the, the more we shop pomona the more that that money continues to help us and continues to go to services here in the city to continue to improve the city and be able to continue to do items here. Um, I do have a question and something that stuck out in your presentation and there's a few other items, but they're all pretty much aligned the same the same question. You mentioned that um, the, the 56,000 for the auditing services contract um, that we went ahead and uh, we're gonna pay it. Were we not gonna pay it at all the first time? No, it was a uh, um, it was omitted from the budget in there. Um, it's an annual contract that we have, um, and uh, it was just oversight. Um, it's an annual amount that we really need to budget. Got it. Thank you. And that's it from for me. I'm going to assume it's my turn, Mayor. I think he stepped away, Nora. Oh, oh that was oh. quick. I was expecting it would take longer. But uh, <laughs> you, Councilmember Preciado, and uh, let's go to Vice Mayor Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so first, I'm going to thank uh, Director Mulberry for leading the COC and updating the bylaws to reflect um, more involvement from this commission. I think it's very important to the residents of Pomona that they are aware of where their money's going, what's happening with it, and that the people that we've uh, selected to be uh, representatives of the community be in the know. So thank you for updating those that meeting schedule to four. And I think it's very wise of you to, to, to align that when we, you'll be coming to council. So thank you for that. And now to scare you, um, I, I just want you to think about this for a little A community Zoom meeting to educate the public and the general workings of the budget. I just thought of it, mull it over, <laughs> just, just a thought. 
Uh, I also want to thank our library manager, Anita Torres, for her work. I think she's been on the job less than uh, six months since this pandemic started. And all I hear is how wonderful and amazing she is. And I've seen her in action and I think she's wonderful and amazing too. I wanna to thank her for going out there and getting those library grants to bring programming to our, to our library. I wanna thank the Library Foundation for their cooperation. Um, I wanna thank library staff for being willing to do things like Pomona Library to go as well as offering Chromebooks for our community, as well as uh, printing. Uh, and of course, the fearless leader, Mark Luba, thank you for being our library director. However, uh, <laughs> reluctantly or prolonged the assignment has been, we appreciate you, thank you for that. And I do wanna echo council member Preciado and just thank all of the directors and staff. At the beginning of this fiscal year, we saw a very large gap that we needed to fill and you know, there we 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 didn't get everything. We didn't um, we didn't get everything we thought we would get. But surprisingly enough, we got more than we expected. And now we are we're facing from six almost six million over five million to just on um, just over two hundred thousand. That's amazing. And I, I really want to give kudos to the mayor, Mayor Sandoval, as well as. Uh, council members who were here in 2016 for the preventative work that they did to, to make sure that we were in this situation. I want to say that we're very lucky, but when you have a, a foundation in place and a little luck, you can see yourself through a lot of dark times. So thank you to Mayor Sandoval and all council members who were here in 2016 for Measure PG, for the 10-year forecast. That's really a lot of preventative work that is going to see the that's all that's going to see the city of Pomona through this dark time of COVID-19 and uh, yes definitely thank you to the residents for for trusting the city to bring all this forward and definitely keep shopping Pomona eat Pomona shop Pomona do everything you can to to keep us moving forward thank you very much and thank you thank you vice mayor uh council member Anna Rose Cole well, I'm not going to repeat everything everybody else has said. I just want to thank staff for doing their work and, and, and getting us to this place and uh, uh, continue to shop Pomona people. This is what um, is really important uh, at this stage of, of the game. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Ron Rhodes Cole. Uh, Councilmember Lestro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it goes without saying that I, I would echo my, my colleagues' comments with respect to. Uh, where we are now, uh, you know, a quarter of the way through the year. Um, Andrew, you'll be happy to know that uh, I, I did read through your agenda report and I kept my eyes open the entire time. And it was, uh, it was mainly because um, I, I was curious about where we were given the, uh, and I'll just call it gloom and doom. Uh, we didn't have real high expectations for what was gonna happen this year. And uh, I had expressed to uh, the city manager in our, in our monthly meeting, uh, that uh, uh, I, I was anxious to see kind of where we stood. And, uh, I, and this is before the agenda came out. I didn't know that we were actually gonna uh, get this report. Uh, so the timing, the timing was great. Um, I think generally, I think we would all agree that, that what's contained in the presentation is, is great news. Some of it I think unexpected, but it's, it's great news nonetheless. Uh, I wanna thank you and your staff uh, for um, for pointing out uh, in the agenda report uh, something that maybe uh, people reading the report, maybe untrained, would panic a little bit to see that uh, our revenues are only at 11% of what we expect for the fiscal year when we're a quarter of the way through the year. Um, but uh, you, you clearly pointed out that uh, uh, we don't um, uh, we don't receive our revenues in a straight line. Uh, we, re we receive them at different times of the year. And uh, I appreciate you pointing, pointing all of that out to me. Uh, I'm excited about the, the additional funding for the SEP program, uh, which will uh, allow the program to expand to seven days a week. I think we could start to make some headway uh, with respect to uh, the human trafficking issues that we're experiencing um, on Holt Avenue and, and other places throughout the city. Um, the, as was mentioned, the additional $10,000 to update uh, the, uh, the financial forecast, uh, I think, is, is a 
very prudent expense because even though the 10 year forecast was done, uh, it's, it's a dynamic, it should be a dynamic document. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't stay static. And so I think that's money that's well spent. And then also I think uh, it's obvious that the additional uh, uh, expense for our graffiti abatement workers is, is critical to keeping our, keeping our city clean and keeping it beautiful and addressing the concerns uh, of our residents. Um, department heads, I would just say the same thing as my colleagues. Uh, uh, thank you for all the work that you do with respect to trying to uh, keep a tight rein uh, on the budget. I know what you're going through and uh, your, your, your work is very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Torres. Yes, just wanna reinforce uh, the message to the staff that um, the importance of funding uh, public safety and improving uh, 911 emergency response times. Um, I know there's gonna be difficult times ahead of the city, but it's uh, very important that we go back and uh, continue to talk to these um, uh, stakeholders and ask them to make cuts where there is necessary um, and where it's appropriate. Um, but at the same time is we need to be able to improve the uh, 911 response times in the city. Um, and at the same time, want the city to realize that we have to be focused on uh, long-term debt and paying that down and not trying to, um, how would I say it, um, you know, uh, take on any more for future generations. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a few words to share. First, I just want to thank Andrew. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I think uh, everybody who just watched this uh, feels <laughs> feel a little better uh, considering our last meeting around this discussion around our current financial situation. Uh, so I just want to express my thanks to you and your team uh, for putting this together. I have a few words to say. Uh, one is, um, you know, when you think back to the conversations we had several years ago, uh, where the 10 year forecast was asked for, is we had uh, rising pension obligations uh, and we had a um, pandemic, more recently a pandemic that we could never have accounted for. And we didn't know what the consequences would be. I can tell you that in the city of Los Angeles, there's a $600 million deficit. Grant you it's a very large city, but there are a lot of cities right now that are dealing with serious deficits and it's resulting in furloughed workers or in some cases, workers being laid off. And so I, I really wanna commend a number of people. One, I, I do wanna commend all layers of our staff because we know that no department is, um, how might you say, just um, has a budget where you kind of go, wow, you have everything you need, everything you want. You've been asked to continuously cut and to pare down in order to make sure that this city remains solvent, that we can continue to provide the services that people expect. And you've done that uh, and you've worked incredibly hard. So I wanna just thank all staff uh, in all departments for having done that. Uh, I also wanna thank the public uh, because uh, the, the public's decision, uh, and when we put this on the ballot back in 2018, we didn't know what was gonna happen. But we thought we did uh, several community sessions that we thought would at least express to the residents what was needed. And as all of you know, a number of cities have elected to do the very same thing, some with success and some uh, who uh, the residents did not pass their sales tax measure. Uh, and I want to so I want to thank the residents who overwhelmingly passed this sales tax measure uh, back in 2018. And uh, lastly, I just want to just point out um, a piece of this presentation that's really, really important to me and I believe to every city council member. There is an allocation for the set, set team. So for the public, you might go, well, what is that set team? I, mean, I have no idea what that means. For anyone who has grown up in Pomona, they know that we have lived with human trafficking, particularly on Holt Avenue, since as long as we can remember. I moved here in 1980 as a nine-year-old and I remember riding my bike and seeing women 
particularly women, uh, on Holt Avenue and not really knowing exactly what was going on. And here we are in 2020 and it still persists. And so when the ad hoc committee came together and the ad hoc being the human trafficking ad hoc committee, one of the questions that was posed is how do we not just manage this? How do we not cat and mouse this, right? How do we end this? And we had several presentations and several conversations. And out of that came a recommendation that to do this right, this has to be a seven day a week effort to punish those who should be punished and to liberate particularly the women who find themselves often enslaved in these situations with their handlers. And so I can tell you, I don't recall that this has been done in recent memory. The chief can speak better to that than I can. But one of the things that I'm absolutely committed to over the next four years is putting an end to human trafficking in the city of Pomona. There are serious social consequences, and those are first and foremost, most importantly, is making sure that we help particularly those who are in greatest need. And we rely on our community organizations like Project Sister uh, and Nora, forgive me, but there's another uh, forgive me, Vice Mayor Garcia. There's another organization that I know Tamiko works with, and it's just eluding me right now. Everyone Free and Project Sister Family right. Services, and Everyone Free is part of is part of the Inland Valley's Human Trafficking Coalition. Right. Along this with is, that team. Th thank you, Vice Mayor. This is a collaborative, cooperative, coming together decision that we are not going to accept human trafficking in the city of Pomona, and we'll fight it wherever we can. We obviously know this is a global issue. But that, that infusion of dollars, it's intended to end this, not to continue to just be out there four days a week. They figure it out. They know what days you're going to be out there. And they just game the system no longer. And uh, so I just want to thank, I really, really want to thank the entire community for putting us in a position to be able to do this. And with that said, I'm going to ask, um, I'm actually going to motion that we approve, we adopt, and let me ask the city clerk, is we're adopting the, there's obviously a receiving file, there's a review of the budget, but we're also asked to adopt this resolution, am I not correct? That's correct. Okay, is there anything you need to read? Not on this item, no. Okay, all right, so I will motion to approve, um, and if I can get a second. Second. Here. Okay, I see uh, Council Member Ron Averroes Cole seconded the item. Yes. Thank you. All right, let's do a roll call. Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Montiveros Cole? Yes. Lastro? Yes. Torres? No. Sandoval? Yes. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next item. Next item is item number 28, is the introduction and first reading of an ordinance amending the City of Pomona Municipal Code to update the existing duties and responsibilities of the, of the Community Life Commission, section 2-552 of the Municipal Code. Okay, uh, do we have any speakers on this item? We do not, Mayor. Okay, do we have a presentation uh, regarding this item? Uh, good evening, Mayor, Member City Council. Um, tonight, we have, you have before you the first reading of Ordinance 4294, <clears throat> which had, was asked Council to amend the City Code to update the Community Life Commission um, duties and responsibilities. Updating the responsibilities has been discussed on several occasions over the past decade, um, and we were given recommendations um, by City Council, um, but those were not memorialized. <clears throat> and so the current Community Life Commission um, reviewed those recommendations and um, felt that that what's presented tonight is part of this ordinance best reflects the intent of the Community Life Commission um, and focuses on quality of life, communication, public benefit, and community input. And so uh, they asked that um, the City Council uh, approve this ordinance so that we can memorialize the duties as they have voted on. Um, over discussion. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Frank. 
Okay, uh, are there any council members who wish to speak on this item? Vice Mayor Garcia. Hi, I, I just wanted some clarification if I could, the Director DeFrank. I'm looking at the at the outlines here of the rules and the recommendations. And so the one that caught my attention was uh, work with the city department in identifying and ameliorating quality of life issues in which they or residents may be concerned about, including but not limited to traffic lights, turn signals, bike lanes, pedestrian right of way, et cetera while approving regular updates and projected timelines of resolution. Does this mean, for example, um, as Councilman Preciado pointed out, we will be having a, a presentation by Public Works regarding speed humps. Will the Community Life Commission get this presentation first, or will they be given a summary of this presentation? And so, for example, when a resident wants a stop sign or a traffic signal or a speed hump in their neighborhood, would they first go to community life and then community life would recommend that the council look into that matter or how would that process look like? Uh, uh, yes, uh, council member, this was one of the areas that they felt um, that there was uh, a lot of um, communication that, that uh, comes up um, at, the, at the dais and that they felt that um, a lot of times that residents, if they had a, another a, a, uh, an opportunity to bring things forward to a commission. Um, and so they felt that being a quality of life commission that uh, they would be able to hear these things and make recommendations. So ultimately city council um, is the one that approves because a lot of these things come with, um, with budgetary items and that type of thing. But what they're looking for is the ability to um, uh, provide a, a forum for uh, community members um, to express concerns and then to be able to recommend them to move forward those concerns. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, everything else I feel has been, I've discussed it with my commissioner, uh, community life commissioner, and I, I feel appraised of the situation. So thank you so much, Director DeFrank. Any other uh, comments from uh, the council on this item? Okay, hearing no one, uh, can I get a motion? I'm sorry, uh, Rosalie, do you want to go ahead and read the ordinance? Yes, please, Mayor, thank you. Ordinance number 4294, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Pomona, California, approving and amending the City of Pomona Municipal Code to update the existing duties and responsibilities of the Community Life Commission, section 2-552. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I now get a motion? I move uh, to approve, Mayor. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Roll call vote. Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Ontiveros Cole? Yes. Busro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? Yes. Okay, let's move on to item 29. Item 29 is the update on Activate Pomona Pilot Program and request to extend expiration date until the lifting of the Governor of California Executive Order pertaining to COVID-19. Okay. Uh, any speakers on this item? We do not, Mayor. Okay. Uh, I'm a, I don't want to speak for the Council, but um, I think that this is just uh, something that uh, makes a ton of sense uh, for us to continue. Um, and uh, unless I don't hear any uh, additional comments or conversation, I'd like to go ahead and get a motion uh, to approve this item. Councilmember Preciado. Uh, Anita, could, could you tell us a little bit about um, how the program is doing? Um, how many applications have we received? How many do we have activated? And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm really hoping that they're not all in the downtown. Can you tell us a little bit on, on that? Sure, absolutely. Good evening, Mayor, Council members. I do have a brief presentation, so I'll just share my screen so you can see that. Oops. Sorry, Anita. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Like we're act, we're actually thinking like a meeting that's going to eight thirty nine is long. Uh, I don't remember if you, I don't recall if you remember the olden days. Yeah. Uh, meetings went to midnight or one in the morning. So take your time. I do. Sure. <laughs> uh, Not too so. much time. <laughs> uh, there we go. Can you see that? All right. Cool. So happy to be able to report on this program uh, for you this evening. 
Uh, so what is Activate Pomona? It's a program that the council approved back in June 15th of 2020, beginning of the pandemic, which currently runs through December 31st, 2020, end of this year. Uh, we officially launched it in July 2nd, where we put our applications out uh, into, the, uh, into the public and had people apply. Uh, the program was encouraging economic recovery during COVID-19, specifically helping to relax regulations in the Pomona City Code and our zoning code, encouraging expansions into private property where some of those businesses were limited uh, due to COVID restrictions, encouraged activation of public rights of way, our sidewalks, our streets, really taking advantage. I think the they're slide. not moving. Yeah. Can you see that now? I'm stuck on the main page. Can you see the slide? Anita, maybe if you oh, turn I mean, off your restart. video, if you turn off your video, maybe your 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 slides will on freeze. Trick or teach your trick. Sure. Let's try that again. And and can you see that now? Okay. No. Uh, oh, I, Victor, Steve, now we can see something. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'll just leave it off of uh, full screen mode since that wasn't working too well. So where I left off here is the purpose of uh, uh, Activate Pomona. Um, encourages expansions into our private property, into our public rights of way, our streets, our sidewalks, really trying to take advantage of any space that we have available to help businesses um, succeed during this very difficult time. Um, encourages a variety of home-based occupation businesses, as well as um, encouraging retail, public art, dining, and other activation. Um, it's a citywide program, and what that did is it waived permit fees for other permits that we had, have typically used to allow these types of uses, such as home-based home -based occupancy permits, temporary uses, um, or encroachment permits. Um, the main goals here are guiding questions and wanting to, um, in this pilot program, was equity, liability, safety, practicality. Um, does it apply equitably to all? Can everyone apply for it? Um, do, are we covered from a liability perspective? Um, are, is it the regulations that we have in place set safe and flexible to all of our businesses? And is it practical? Uh, practical? Is it quick? Uh, is it fairly easy for our um, community to apply for this program? So highlights to date. So some of the numbers, and this will answer some of your questions, kind of, Councilmember Preciado. Um, to date, it's 18 weeks since the launch of the program. We've had 141 applications. Um, 56 of those were home based businesses, uh, 42 on pro uh, private property expansions, and 43 into the rights of way. And you can see on the map that's here on the screen where those are located. The green dots are home based occupancy per, um, businesses, the red is private property expansions, and the blue dots are um, in, in the public rights of way. So you can see where that's uh, um, spread throughout. So a lot of the public rights of way in the downtown area, but still spread out throughout. So uh, I think we see a nice mix of, of community members taking advantage of, those, uh, of that uh, program. Um, going into some more detail, so in terms of cost savings or relief, we estimate about $100,000, um, about 27 in, in permit fees that we've waived. Um, we've, uh, in terms of relief, we've gained $23,000 in grant dollars that allowed us to secure K-rails and um, barriers, which helped us implement the parklets and add that as a, an option to our businesses. One of the big barriers that we found is that 
and activating the right of way and in the street. Um, you really need those barriers to protect you from vehicular traffic, um, and we certainly don't want any accidents. So those are very expensive um, and, and can be uh, laborious to uh, bring in, especially the big cement K rails. So fortunately, we were able to secure grant dollars through the San Gabriel Valley Area COG and get um, purchase K rails. So we're able to purchase those about uh, 14 um, concrete barriers. And those are the ones you see in downtown, plus an additional 30 water filled barriers, which are a little bit easier to move, uh, a little bit more mobile. And so, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about those and how we've deployed those throughout the city. And then another about almost $50,000 that we've been able to provide in relief funding for local artists through our arts and public uh, places program. Um, the Arts Commission approved about 50,000 to pay Pomona based artists to decorate and muralize the um, uh, barriers that we'll have throughout our city. So, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment about where we're at with that program and when we can expect to see it. Uh, going on a little bit to home based businesses. Um, again, 56, the breakdown of those is uh, a lot of home office, online, crafts, things like that, some home food-based sales, and then about five of those were rejected or paused um, due to maybe lack of information, not quite exactly falling into the category of what we could approve. Um, and some of the trends that we've seen in home-based businesses, increased demand for one, and I think uh, as uh, from March to November 20, compared from March to November 2020, compared to the same time frame in 2019, uh, we've seen twice as many applications. Maybe some of those reasons are one due to COVID pandemic and wanting people wanting to find businesses to do from home. Another option or, or idea may be because we've publicized it through our social media campaign and getting the word out that you can apply for this. That's something we haven't been we haven't done in the past either. So I think the combination of those two has really seen an uptick in the home based occupations. Uh, craft online goods again, like something you'd see on uh, import or export or Etsy or some of these other um, sites. Uh, other uh, businesses uh, that's kind of trending is salons or barber shops. Uh, now, this one is a question for council if if they're interested in seeing this as a home based occupation. That's currently not something that we allow in our zoning code. It is something, though, that recently the uh, it's regulated by the California Board of Cosmetology, and they have recently allowed it to be home based. Um, but currently, the city doesn't have any standards. So that's an interesting one. We've gotten a few um, inquiries, but uh, have not approved any to date. Uh, another area of trending that's uh, uh, businesses is um, home-based food sales. And again, we, we've approved uh, some, uh, here you can see 10. There's also some different uh, regulations under cottage foods that is, uh, may, may allow for another avenue to allow additional food-based um, businesses to be from home. And one of those is um, that's regulated by the Department of Public Health, adding to the lists of um, ethnically available foods. They have a list of approved foods. So that may be something to consider in the future is adding to that list and getting it approved of what we can do here in Pomona, which, which may aid some uh, residents in being able to sell things from their home. And then going into just private property and expansion, again, 42 of those permits, you can see the breakdown outdoor dining and outdoor personal recreation services are the two highest uh, and then outdoor retail and about 12 of those of uh, the total were uh, not allowed again not really falling into the purview of what we could do um, under that private property expansion uh, and then the reasons again for uh, rejections or pausing in insufficient site capacity or circulation um, um, or uh, some of those were just an unnecessary permit request. Um, and through the private property, we've worked very hard for the last few months to coordinate with our other fellow departments um, within the city, uh, in particular building and safety. So we've come up with a, a review in terms of canopy side, size, what needs a permit, what doesn't. Um, also with county fire, county fire has been very helpful and we've been co coordinating with uh, county fire in terms of inspection and they've put out some gu guidelines in terms of what requires a permit more than 100 400 square foot requires a permit, but they're doing it uh, at no cost and online so we do a lot of coordination and we work with the applicants to put them in touch with those departments to make sure that they can get all the clearances they need uh, as quickly as possible. 
Uh, and then, the, and we've developed guidelines here. This is another guideline that Public Works put together. So we've worked with Public Works. Uh, on many of these permits, we talk with multiple departments before we issue them. Um, and this is particularly for parklets, giving some guidance on uh, where those parklets can be and the size of them needed to provide uh, the most uh, safe uh, uh, space possible. And then food truck considerations. So uh, of the two here, we don't have it called out specifically, but there's two locations that we did apply, uh, allow food trucks, uh, one on Holt and one on South Gary. Um, and those, have, uh, those are the two that had allowed the food trucks periodically. And we did uh, through this process, um, find that there was one clarification on the type of commercially designated vehicle. Um, it's not just one that has to be driven, but it can be a, a fully functional uh, cart, one that's pulled, that does have a license, and that can be uh, uh, approved as a food, a food truck as well. Um, so just some of those nuances that uh, are very important to a particular vendor, um, but uh, in the scheme of things is, is a very minor clarification. Uh, and then just uh, wrapping it up with uh, public private uh, private property expansion. Here's some examples of what we've seen here in the city um, for private property expansion uh, for outdoor dining. Uh, here uh, is an example of a, of a parklet uh, over at O'Donovan's that we put in place. And so those uh, were uh, put in place four at four locations on November 9th and on streets with that were less than 25 miles per hour local streets. And on that, we've selected uh, 31 artists, going back to my uh, arts and public places uh, programming. We had 60, more than 60 artists apply and 31 artists were selected, Pomona-based artists that will be putting, muralizing those, uh, those barriers. And they will be getting paid for that out of um, the AIPP funding. So again, providing some economic recovery even to our local artists. Um, and then the, over here is a picture of some of our parklet guidelines that my staff has put together. Um, giving uh, to our applicants that have requested parklets, what's required of them, what is a parklet, what, what are we expecting of you, because we provide the barriers, but we're, as the city, are not uh, providing all of the, the seating or the extras that go along with it, the applicant still needs to uh, provide all that. So that brochure uh, helps explain all of what's required with that parklet. And then uh, just last two slides here, um, another picture here in downtown. Um, when there was a street closure. So currently the street closures also as part of Activate Pomona um, were, are currently are east of Gary and Thomas between second and third. Uh, and then uh, just finally, here's some of the outreach that we've done in terms of communication uh, with the help of uh, the executive team, Jocelyn, who's been doing a great job helping us spread the word with Activate Pomona. Here's some screenshots of what we've done to promote it on social media. We've also held um, uh, webinars with the Chamber of Commerce, and we've done a bilingual one with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce as well to emphasize and ask questions about Activate Pomona specifically. So um, that's a little bit about the program. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, Anita, thank you for that uh, thorough presentation. Uh, it's, uh, it's encouraging uh, to see what is developed uh, by this Activate Pomona. And so thank you for that. Uh, you know, Councilman Preciado, do you want, do you have any comments? Or questions? No, that was an excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Any other uh, comments or questions? Uh, Vice Mayor Garcia. Uh, Director Gutierrez, uh, I my one of my favorite Pomona activities is Second Saturday, the Art Walk. Uh, I think it was very convenient when the, our the street was closed on Gary uh, West of the West part of second for Art Walk because it allowed people to spread out more. Uh, I was at Art Walk this past December and what concerned me were the number of people on the sidewalks because the street was not closed. Uh, what was the rationale for opening up that second, that other half of second street? Yes, uh, thank you, Council Member Garcia. So we did originally close um, second street um, west of Gary, right to, to Main Street. And uh, over the a couple of weeks that it was in place, we received comments from the uh, Downtown Pomona Owners Association that that wasn't quite working for the businesses and that they prefer that to be opened up. So at their request, uh, we discussed it with um, the Mayor's Subcommittee um, and uh, 
uh, it granted that request and so we opened it back up to on the on the west side. Is there any way that we can continue to close it for second Saturday art walk or temporarily close it as other times it's been done for art walk? Well, that's a difficult one, uh, Council Member Garcia, because currently LA County health guidelines do not explicitly do not allow us to permit events for social gathering. Um, they allow farmers markets uh, specifically for essential goods such as groceries and foods, but not other vending items. So permitting that would be expressly against LA County health guidelines. And so uh, I'm, I'm not sure how we could do that. Okay, well, I, I guess my where we're having a disconnect is that there are businesses on these on the west side of Second Street, uh, for example, I know that the alley gallery has an activate Pomona permit, the, uh, the cafe con libros has an activate Pomona permit, and they have vendors coming in with food. Uh, and they took up that 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 their spots respectively on Second Street in front of planters or in front of Sean Diamond Plaza. And so I guess my concern is that now that the street is open, these vendors are taking up the sidewalk and they have tables, booths and people gathering, people are lining up. And at some point I saw people lining up on the street uh, just from the sidewalk. I, I will admit I was one of those people. I was walking down the street because the sidewalk was just too crowded. And I thought I would take my chances um, just walking along the planters. So those are just some of the considerations that I'm thinking of. When you have an Activate Pomona permit that's already been granted, they have food, they have vendors on the sidewalk and the streets are open, then you're just creating a situation where six feet of distance is not being able to be maintained. And, and I want Activate Pomona and these pop-ups to continue because they do bring vibrancy and business to the city. So those are just my thoughts and comments. Uh, I fully support everything that is being done under Activate Pomona because I think it's a great thing. So thank you so much for, for, for hearing me out on my concerns. Thank you. Tim, are you on mute? Mayor? Mayor. Mm -hmm. Mute. That is a problem. <laughs> Okay, just give me one second. All right, so we need a motion. I'll motion to approve. Okay, and Councilor Romano Rose Cole, do you want to second that? Yeah, I, I just had a real quick question before I second it um, for Anita. You mentioned a truck on Holt Avenue, whereabouts was that? The American Legion. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Okay, let's go into roll call vote. Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Otiveros Cole? Yes. Lustro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? Yes. All right, let's move on to our next item, which is item three. Public hearing item number 30. It's a public hearing and adoption of a resolution approving the city of Pomona Housing Authorities moving to work MTW plan for submission of application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Okay, uh, do we have a staff presentation? Uh, not a presentation, Mayor, but at this time, I'd like to um, ask George Montano, who is our Housing Authority Manager, um, to provide just a brief overview of the move to work program um, and why we are applying for it as a housing authority. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. I'm hoping you can hear me. Can you hear me? Better. That, Great, the thank last you. part was better, not the first part. <laughs> Again, good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is George Montano, the Housing Authority Manager for the Pomona Housing Authority. Uh, the item before you is to request board approval of the Pomona Housing Authority's draft moving to work plan for submission of an application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. On October 2018, HUD offered high-performing public housing agencies the opportunity to apply for admission to the Moving to Work Demonstration Program, which would implement innovative changes to the way affordable housing and self-sufficiency programs uh, are administered locally. Uh, the three main goals are to achieve programmatic efficiency and reduce costs, 
promote self-sufficiency among families and increase housing choice for low-income households. As an MTW agency, the Pomona Housing Authority will be given the flexibility and authority to develop policies outside the limitations of certain HUD regulations and provisions. The attached draft MTW plan provides the PHA's overall vision of its local MTW and the unique challenges, challenges and opportunities that the participation in the MTW demonstration program would bring. Uh, the PHA notified voucher program participants of its intent to apply for and develop the plan. Uh, the draft plan was also made available on the city's website and PHA offices. Uh, the PHA also held virtual meetings and uh, to obtain input and feedback. In addition, a public hearing is required to discuss the draft MTW plan as part of the application process. The adoption of the resolution uh, and draft MTW plan will place the Pomona Housing Authority for review by HUD to receive the designation for the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Uh, thank you for your consideration and I'm available for any questions. Thank, thank you, Mr. Montano. Uh, before we ask the city council to land, do we have any speakers on this item? We do not, Mayor. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and open the public hearing and uh, hearing that uh, and seeing that there are no speakers on this item, I'm gonna close the public hearing. And then I'd like to ask the city council to land. If I can start with council member Preciado. Uh, I don't have any questions at this time, thank you. Okay, Vice Mayor Garcia. No questions, Mayor, thank you. Councilman Ron Rose Cole. No, not at this time, thank you. Councilman Lestro. Uh, no questions, very comprehensive report, thank you. And Councilman Torres. No. All right, can I get a motion from the City Council? Move to approve. Okay, take second. a second. Second you, Mayor. All right, now let's go ahead and do a uh, roll call vote. Estrada? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Monteveros Paul? Yes. Lastro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? A yes. We move on to the next item. Next item are matters initiated by city council members. These are items for future city council consideration as requested by the mayor or members of the city council. We'll start with Council Member Torres. Great, thank you. Um, tonight, I wanna to request that the uh, mayor and city council finalize the process for establishing the police commission. Uh, Pomona residents are calling for a commission where they could address issues. In order to help bring our community together and ease tensions, we must establish a commission that encourages our community to voice their concerns. In 2017, I helped lead the effort to purchase police officer body cameras in Pomona, and it has led to many positive changes in our city. Over the past year, I have received hundreds of calls, social media posts, and emails from Pomona residents urging the city of Pomona to take action. I strongly urge the mayor and city council to bring back this item for a vote and to encourage the community to provide their input so that we can establish this commission. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and move on to Councilor Lestro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, quick question for uh, Public Works Director Guerrero. Um, do you have an ETA on when our parks are gonna reopen legally? <laughs> we always do things legally, Council Member. <laughs> um, yeah, we do have, we did purchase a uh, new signage to be placed at our playgrounds. As you, as you may or may not know, the, the, the green areas of our parks have been open. Um, the playgrounds have been closed. Uh, we did recently purchase 28 signs that have uh, language obviously related to COVID, what to do, what not to do. Um, we are slowly starting to get those signs out. We're, we're trying to find the appropriate locations at each playground so that that sign can be most visible to everybody. Uh, and then once those signs are up, then we will begin opening up our restrooms to the kind of pre-COVID schedule. Um, but uh, that should start here in the next week or two. I would, I would imagine that we can start installing those signs and getting those playgrounds open over the next, uh, next two weeks. And, and do you think maybe once that process starts, uh, what, a couple of weeks to get all the signs up? 
I, I would say so, yeah. I mean, it, it should be a fairly easy process once we determine the location. We, you know, we're, I'm hoping to find locations, existing uh, light poles or other post, sign posts that are out there now that we can add the sign to. I don't want to, I don't want to pollute the area with signs, but I'm also trying to stay away from installing new posts because then we'll have to get dig alert out there and make sure we're not putting a post where there's maybe some existing underground utilities. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, uh, Council Morano Brasco. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, the only thing I would like to request at this time is after hearing the letter from the resident Joshua Mashuka in regards to Mountain View and the rest of the residents who have been going through a great ordeal regarding uh, the situation that he had mentioned. I don't have to go into that. I'd like to have uh, something brought to the council. Uh, Director R Rene Guerrero, if you could please maybe do something so we can maybe perhaps help him. I know that he is requesting an alley closure. I know we rejected this back in 2017 uh, in regards to another situation, but this is a little graver than that particular one. I myself have been going out there myself and witnessing quite a, quite a few things uh, this weekend, especially. Uh, so I would really like to bring this to the council, uh, Mayor, uh, to um, uh, have more of a discussion on what we can do for these residents. Um, it is, I think they're just going through a very hard time now. They're doing everything they can, uh, but there is a lot of activity and speaking with the hard team, uh, when we went out there and had a discussion, they were very concerned of the, uh, of the dynamics. Uh, and uh, I've noticed that there's every, every day, if they do, graf if they do um, uh, take care of the graffiti, I called it in uh, this weekend, it's gone, but the next day it's back again. Something is definitely going on over there. But there is a lot of drug related activity. I watched them. I was sitting in a car with a friend and I was taking a look myself and it was pretty alarming. So if we could do that, uh, uh, Mr. Guerrero, uh, I would like to bring this to the, uh, now that it's out to the attention of our council, what we can do for this particular uh, neighborhood. Thank you. Um, before we proceed to uh, Vice Mayor Garcia, uh, just Briefly, Council Member on a Rose Cole. Uh, I had two conversations earlier today with Mr. Machuca and with um, Public Works Director Rene Guerrero. And uh, this is something that obviously I was made aware of a um, long time ago when, when you and I had spoken about it. Exactly. And uh, as I understand it, and uh, Mr. Guerrero, just correct me if I'm wrong, is it can come to the City Council. Um, but there's a process that has to happen before it comes to the city council. And I explained uh, to Mr. Machuca exactly what that is. Uh, so I'll just briefly explain it. And uh, Mr. Guerrero, if you wanna chime in, that's fine too. But so the first thing is there's a application process uh, to get the, is it a variance? Yes. It's to get the easement vacated. Right. Yeah, to, to vacate. Um, there's a fee to that. I would be willing, as a finding of public benefit, to help support that uh, with you, exactly. Councilman Rana Rose Cole. I agree. Okay. I would be happy to do that. But one of the key pieces is that Mr. Machuca has to get a certain percentage of property owners. And I understand there's some renters, but has to get a certain number of property owners to agree. And he assured me that he's going to work on that. Okay. Okay. And once he does that, and then at least he can start the application process. One of the other pieces, should that go through, right? In other words, should the residents who are the property owners agree, and keep in mind there are renters there, is that they have to get a surveyor. There's a cost associated with that. And then of course they would have to put up the gate defense. So there is a pathway to this, but before it can come before the city council, Mr. Machuca and the residents have to take that step of the application. And I think, as I mentioned to him, we wanna be helpful here. The real critical step is getting the number of signatures that are necessary so that 
we are not overstepping private property rights, I would imagine, uh, if we just go ahead and do it and then the owners say, well, we didn't agree to this and we're not gonna pay anything. So I wanna make sure that we're clear about that. And Mr. Guerrero, did I explain that correctly? You sure did, thank you very much. So, so I, I think right now, it's at least in the court of Mr. Machuca to get those signatures. And I have assured him that if he can do that, then we'll be happy to help support him at least with the application so that that doesn't become a barrier uh, for him at least moving this process along with obviously the goal is, um, and, and, and he said, listen, Mayor, will you help me fundraise? I said, sure, I'll help you fundraise. Uh, I mean, I know how important this is to you. So, so I, I, I just wanted to make sure that he understood that this wasn't something that beyond the application that we were gonna pay for. Uh, there is, we don't have the funds necessarily to do that. Uh, but he understood and he appreciated it. And he appreciated that at least if he took care of the application, it would get to the city council uh, for consideration. So I hope that was helpful. I know I spoke quite a bit, but I hope that was helpful, uh, Councilman Ron and Rose Cole. No, I uh, think that's a very good idea. And if that's what we have to do, and if the uh, neighbors are willing to do that, I'd be more than happy to back them up. And I'm sure you okay. will too. And I'll, and I'll be happy to work with you on that. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, let's go to Vice Mayor Garcia. Uh, I, I wish Mr. Uh, Man, is it Manchuka? And Manchuka. Council Member, and Council Member Cole Luck, uh, that alley process is, is quite a process. Uh, one alley in my neighborhood got a 50% and then that's when the applicant decided to stop. So good luck to you with that. Uh, I guess I have two, two things for staff and then just two comments very quickly. Uh, my first concern is that I was recently at Mountain View Park. Uh, one, it's very sad that there's no longer a little league there, but I noticed that there was uh, some missing infill in the playground equipment. And I maybe that's because we're currently not supposed to be on the playground equipment, but as a grown adult of five foot five stature, I had to jump quite a bit of ways to try to get onto some of those swings. Um, so maybe uh, adding some, uh, I guess it's, uh, what's it called? Tree bark? I don't know. I apologize. I, I'm going to call it um, mulch. Uh, adding some more mulch or, or whatever to that large uh, padding so that children could have an easier time of accessing the swings uh, would be appreciated. Um, I also want to ask about um, that staff please look into removing CIP uh, signage uh, on a more prompt level. I, again, this was just a couple of, of weeks ago, but the signage at Mountview Park for the water project was still up. And I know I asked this morning for signage to be removed regarding the Philadelphia street repavement. So if we could just make sure that uh, these signs in city, city, basically city property is, are removed uh, as quickly as possible after the project is complete, I would appreciate it. I also want to acknowledge to the residents of South Pomona, I heard the boom too, okay? I, it woke me up at four this morning and then it kept me up at 4.09 a.m. Uh, I've spoken to the city manager and to the chief and we're, we're looking into it, but I have no idea what this were, but I do agree with residents that they didn't exactly sound like gunshots or fireworks. So it's a mystery and hopefully we won't be hearing them again, but we will be trying to find some kind of answer for you. Um, and lastly, I just have a request this holiday season and that is justice for Rene Lopez. He is a young man who was shot and killed in district three uh, at the beginning of the month of November. I've spoken to his mother and family and at the end of the day, all they really want is for a witness to come forward and help them bring justice and closure to their family. So I'm, I'm asking our community, uh, many of you have suffered uh, violence and might, some of you know what it means to have answers uh, go on, questions go unanswered. So if you would all, if you witness anything, if you know anything, please anonymously report to the police that we can have justice for for and closure for his his grieving mother and thank you for for the time there thank you uh councilman preciado 
Um, city manager, I, I, you and I have talked about this and um, I just want to put it out there so that all of the council can hear as well. And, and if it works for everyone, um, congratulations to everybody. And, you know, we're waiting for the certifications, absolutely, but still congratulations to everyone who has been elected. Um, and in, in December, and, uh, and it's been about two years now since we've gone over our goals and metrics. So if there's any um, study items that we can re re release uh, to the entire council and maybe get an update uh, so, or an opportunity for us to have another study session because we haven't had one with the current city manager, um, I would love to go over uh, goals and metrics again with the new council and to update from the two, two years that we've had, not to mention uh, with the new city manager. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Brasile. Uh, I have a few things. Uh, I'll be uh, as quick as I can. Um, and I want to make sure that um, the swearing in that happens uh, in December, uh, you may recall that uh, we had established a separate process for that. Obviously, it's going to look very different. Uh, but I want to just put that on the radar. I've already spoken to uh, James about it. And uh, Rosalie, I know I haven't spoken to you, uh, but perhaps there's a way to do it um, that is uh, smooth and clean, but that is separate from the city council meeting. We wanted to make sure that it was not a part of the uh, city council, the first city council meeting, or certainly not the second city council meeting. There was a separate swearing in that happened. Grant you all three. Um, uh, three council, uh, two council members of the mayor obviously were reelected, uh, and then of course District One will have a new city council member. So uh, I'd be happy to talk with you, that, uh, talk to you about that offline. Uh, but just uh, want to put it uh, out there because uh, people may be wondering how that's going to look. Obviously, we have to wait to get uh, the election certified, uh, but I know that uh, we'll have to figure out what that next step is. And the council actually outlined this because of the um, situation that happened back in 2016. Uh, and we, I thought we did a really good job of making it, uh, we simplified it uh, for the uh, new, newly elected council members in 2018. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And then um, I just wanna just uh, also, uh, the inclusionary housing ordinance uh, is uh, want to make sure that we get that uh, on discussion uh, the first meeting in December. Uh, I'd also uh, like to propose that um, in January, and maybe perhaps it's part of a discussion with the goals that uh, Councilman Preciado raised, is the rental inspection ordinance as a discussion uh, in a special session um, for consideration. Uh, so just want to put that there. And then, Benita, I'd like to get an update on uh, where we're at with our youth program. Um, I know we had allocated dollars uh, specifically for youth programming. Grant you youth programming looks incredibly different uh, during COVID-19, but if uh, we can just kind of explain where we're at, uh, that would be helpful, I think. Um, and I know we had talked about an RFP process, but just want to just get an update on that, see where we're at. And I'm very mindful of the current situation that we're in. I just wanna make sure that we manage expectations uh, and think about how we're gonna best utilize those resources uh, between now and the end of the fiscal year. And then just lastly, uh, uh, many of you know that uh, I had formed a Mayor's Reform and Accountability Task Force that is uh, chaired by uh, Eric Vasquez, a District 6 uh, uh, resident. Uh, and there are several people from throughout the city who are part of that. There's a discussion, and that includes the participation of uh, the police department, including the chief, that has been incredibly productive. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Chair Vasquez to come to the city council meeting, either the first or the second city council meeting, to give a just an update. Uh, and certainly part of that conversation is a police, police oversight commission, uh, which is uh, something that we discussed uh, over a year ago. Uh, so I just want to be clear that that is uh, part of the ongoing discussion. Okay, uh, with that said, uh, we will, uh, our next regular meeting will be held on December 7, 2020, via Zoom webinar due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Closed session items will be discussed at 5.30 p.m. and the open session will commence at 7 p.m. This meeting is now adjourned.
everyone be safe and have a good night. Thank you. Good night.